Hi, my name is Tito and here are some of the trends and stories that were big in Nigeria on social media from Saturday, March 30th to Friday, April 5th. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle set a new record with their new Instagram account. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, better known to us as Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, recently got their own Instagram account and set a Guinness World Record in the process. Their new account, at Sussex Royal, gained 1 million followers on April 2nd in a record 5 hours and 45 minutes, beating the previous record holder, South Korean singer Kang Daniels of 11 hours and 36 minutes. In their very first post, the royal couple wrote, Welcome to our official Instagram. We look forward to sharing the work that drives us, the causes we support, important announcements, and the opportunity to shine a light on key issues. This new account allows them to break away from the at Kensington Royal account that they shared with Prince William and Kate. The announcement also comes at a very special time as Harry and Meghan are expecting their first child later this month or in early May. If you recall, Meghan Markle had an Instagram account but had to delete it before marrying into the royal family. Victoria Kimani throws shade at Tiwa Savage. Kiss Daniel's FU challenge picked up the pace this week with more musicians and even some comedians getting in on the challenge. However, one entry that had everyone talking was the one from Kenyan singer Victoria Kimani who dissed YC and threw shade at Tiwa Savage in her freestyle. On it she goes, Grandma African bad girl, turning 45 and still claiming bad girl. You can block me from shows but you can't block my blessings. We all know you're selling and it's so depressing. I don't know, did Victoria Kimani and Tiwa Savage have beef prior to this? In another verse, she calls out rapper YC, claiming he steals lyrics and that he stole the lyrics of his hit song Juice from her. I think these artists should just tell us what parts of their lyrics in this FU challenge are facts and which are fiction and stop hiding behind creative license because this is all getting confusing. Rapper Nipsey Hussle killed over a personal dispute. The week started on a sad note as people woke up to news of the passing of rapper Nipsey Hussle. The 33-year-old rapper was shot in front of his store, the Marathon Clothing Company in Hyde Park, Los Angeles. Two other individuals were shot in the incident, but Nipsey Hussle passed away having sustained fatal gunshot wounds to the head and torso. He tweeted just before the shooting, having strong enemies is a blessing. On Tuesday, Eric Holder, the man suspected of killing Nipsey Hussle was arrested by police. The LA police chief told reporters that Nipsey and Holder knew each other and the shooting appears to be a product of a personal dispute. Although alleged to be a member of a gang, Nipsey Hussle was known for being more about positivity and trying to build bridges between rival gangs. Tributes from members of the entertainment community poured in when news of his death broke. Stars like Drake, Rihanna, Cardi B, Snoop Dogg, Wiz Khalifa, The Game, Nick Mill, Pharrell Williams, Diddy, Ed Sheeran and many others mourned the rapper. Nipsey Hussle was the father of two children and was in a long-time relationship with his girlfriend, actress Lauren London. Outrage over another extrajudicial killing in Lagos In an attempt to apprehend a suspect in the Manguru bus stop area of Lagos, a police officer shot into the air to disperse a crowd and a stray bullet hit 36-year-old Kolade Johnson on Sunday afternoon. The killing on March 31st sparked outrage amongst Nigerians and reawakened the campaign to bring an end to the heavy-handed SARS force and all its affiliates in the Nigerian police force. The outcry from Nigerians from all walks of life and segments of society thankfully were heard before long and the Nigerian police force vowed to investigate the matter and bring the guilty officers to justice. Days later, the Nigerian police said that they had apprehended the officers responsible for the shooting and that they were subjected to internal disciplinary procedures. The two men were Inspector Oguyemi Olalekon and Sergeant Godwin Oji of the Anti-Cultism Squad. Lagos State Commissioner of Police Zubairu Moazu also paid a condolence visit to the family of the deceased and reassured them that justice will be done. Let's hope that this will be the end of unlawful police brutality and killings and may the souls of Kolade and countless others who have suffered a similar fate rest in perfect peace. Court nullifies Adeleke's nomination for Oshun governorship elections. There is yet another twist to Senator Ademola Adeleke's quest to become governor of Oshun state. If you recall, 
Last week, an Oshun State Election Petition Tribunal declared Adelike the winner of the September 2018 election. But this week, a high court in Abuja nullified Adelike's candidacy on grounds that he wasn't qualified academically to contest the position. Delivering the judgment in a suit challenging Adelike's qualification to contest for the office of governor, Justice Othman Musa held that plaintiffs were able to prove that Adelike did not possess the minimum qualification of being educated up to the secondary school level as stipulated in the 1999 constitution. The judge said though evidence showed Adelike was admitted to Muslim high school Ede Oshun State in 1976, there was no record showing that he had graduated from the school as his name was not seen in the school's register in 1980. Senator Adelike's superstar nephew David O, while sharing a report of the nullification on his Twitter handle, wrote, Story for the Gods. For details on these stories and many more, please visit www.olorisupergirl.com and follow the hashtag.